Hello fellow wanderers, I'm Endry, and thank you for joining me as we wander through some more EQ Titan, a new player tutorial. Now, if you've caught up with all of the videos I've put up so far, uh, you should have gotten your uh, newbie armor, you should have gotten your characters to level 19 or 20, depending on your preference. I recommend 19 if you have any int casters, and you're done basically gearing up and doing what you can with the uh, MQ2 E3 macro at its very basic level. We haven't set up any spells yet. Uh, we're not really utilizing our characters to their full potential, but uh, we don't really need to yet. Well, after level 19, that sort of changes. So we're going to have to do some things, and one of the things we're going to have to do is acquire spells. But before we get into that, I kind of wanted to go over the EQ Titan website tools for players, because it's going to make a few of the things we're about to do much simpler. So the first thing is, you'll have definitely wanted to have watched my video where I go over how to register your characters on the server. Uh, pound, register, space, login, space, password, uh, that will, for your forum account, and that will register that account in its entirety, no matter how many characters are on it, to the EQ Titan database. The reason we want to do this is these player tools basically work off of what's registered to the forum account here. So if you've done that, and I've gone over that in another video, uh, this will be a lot more useful. So let's just go down the player tools section in general. By the way, if you don't see this flags and zone access under here, you're not in the forum. Uh, the main page for some reason does not show flags and zone access, but that's more of an end game thing than a new player thing. So we're probably not gonna touch on that too much. Uh, but first, maps. This takes you to the EQ Titan EQ Atlas, where you could click on the maps of the various zones that exist inside the game. Uh, this is basically a mirror of the old EQ Atlas site. Very useful. There are perhaps better maps out there nowadays, but these are very good. For, they are, they're all uh, hand-drawn, beautifully done, uh, wonderful maps. I've used these forever uh, when I was playing on live. I was kind of sad when he stopped updating them uh, after Legacy of Yukesha. But beautiful maps, uh, very good resource to use if you don't remember how to get around the game. Of course, there are the in-game maps that you'll probably have running to help you in-game as well. Uh, database Editor, this is a complicated tool. I'll get to it in a bit. Character Mover, I believe, no longer functions, so completely pointless. Uh, if you get stuck, log off. Uh, log back in without auto login on and click return home to get unstuck. Alternate abilities, uh, more of an end game thing here, but it'll kind of show the interface. Uh, it tells you how many AAs are working broken or not. So 17 AAs are just broken on this server. Seven of them work partially. 115 haven't even been tested. And we know that 211 are verified to work. Some of these untested do actually work near as I could tell, but haven't undergone rigorous testing. But you can go here, you can see all of your different characters. These are all my characters that I have registered to my forum account. I don't have my new crew. Well, I do have my new crew, but they're not high enough level for AA. So let's just click Dreed here, my warrior. Uh, I don't care if it's known or not, but this will let you winnow down whether or not the AA is there. We'll just do a search. So these are all of the AAs that Dreed does know or can know and whether or not they're working or not. So here we can see that some of them are, most of them are working. Untested, Chaotic Jester, which is a veteran AA everybody gets. It's, it works, I mean, it summons the Jester. Uh, Expedient Recovery does work, I've used it. I don't know why it still lists as untested. Uh, Fear Resistance is listed as partial, I don't know why, but let's click it and find out. Uh... It grants the resistance, but do does not grant the chance to break early, so it's partially broken. Fair enough. Ah, heightened endurance is just broken. So if we click the link, not implemented. Hopefully they will, because it's a little annoying on the Underfoot client to not have the endurance regen working like it should. But hey, they've got a lot to work on, uh, so I understand it. It ain't run speed, does work. I have it on all my characters, trust me, it works. Intensity works just fine, even though it says it's untested. Um, new ten and Crafty Mastery, don't waste points. It's been disabled. Uh, you don't need it to have its effect. 
Sadly, Stalwart Endurance, which is the chance to ignore stunning blows, has not been implemented, so it doesn't work. So Ogre Tanks are still your only way to avoid stuns. Dead Fast Servant does actually work. I've summoned them before. Swift Journey, I have not tried. I assume that since the other one works, this one works as well. And Tactical Mastery, uh, Strike Through, not implemented, so you don't have the ability to avoid dodges, blocks, parries, and reposts. But anyway, that's all up there. This is just how you look at your AAs. Just if you are curious what they do exactly, click their names and you get a breakdown of what they do exactly according to the database. Bizarre Sellers, click that here. Uh, on this server, you could set up bots to be Bizarre Sellers. This shows you everything in the Bazaar, literally everything. How much it costs, who has it. So if you're looking for an item, there you go. You can search it here. You could show current uh, on the Bazaar, current count, current price, history. So whether or not it's been inflated or not. And yeah, there you go. That's how you find Bazaar stuff, or you can just go to the Bazaar. You know, whatever. Character change log, you can click a character. It will tell you everything they've changed uh, on the character. I don't really see the point of this. Uh, you can click my accounts only here. I haven't changed anything on my characters. I don't know why you care, but they do keep track of what you change on your character. Class, race, daily list. So <laughs> this lets you work with the return home button and all sorts of stuff. Um, and basically zones that are allowed for your starting zone, uh, the races, the class that, and the race and the deity. So if you need it, uh, with the plastic surgeon, this basically tells you what are the appropriate combinations because you could change your race, your religion uh, at any time. So that's kind of cool. I don't know if I went over that yet. I may have to go over that. I don't use it personally, but it's there. Guilds, this is a list of all of the guilds, the members and all of that kind of stuff that are on the server. You can make a guild at any time using the plastic surgeon. Go. Uh, hot zones. This is the list of the hot zones. So these have a 0.75 increase to the XP in the zone. These change every week. You've got the name, uh, when it last was, and it's, it's completely random. They don't go in any order. It's just randomly chosen. Umbral planes. There you go. That's how you can find your hot zones. Pound hot zones will also do it inside the game. Inventory search. This is a really useful function. You can search by item name, the type, just like in the bazaar, the character, uh, the location, equipped inventory, bank, shared bank, or on their cursor, slot, uh, item ID, which is not, this isn't really all that useful. But these ones here, what I use this for is when I'm going through a dungeon or I'm doing a raid and I'm like, oh, this dropped and like six different characters can use this. I go, okay, uh, what location is it? Oh, what's, what do they have equipped now? What slot is it on? And I could compare them. It doesn't really matter. I'll just click back here. This is all the back armor all of my characters are wearing. So there you go. Um, interesting. My new characters aren't registered. They used to be. Hmm. Oh, I don't think they have any armor, actually. Um, anyway. Uh, this shows everything. You can click the item. It will take you to Lucy, which will show you the actual stats for the item. And that way you can know what your characters are wearing, compare them, and decide who gets the upgrade. Yeah, I've got Hippity here. Oh, the Cloak of the Sky, which is a NTOV item. It's good. It's probably why I haven't replaced it. Is, is the upgrade for it is pretty minor, so I'm getting everybody else caught up first, though it looks like everybody else is pretty well caught up. Anyway, off my sidetrack. Inventory search. Very useful to figure out who needs what or who's missing what. Player spell. This is the main reason uh, you need to know about this before you go spell hunting. If you click player spells and you click a character, let's say Dostava. Do I have my others? Mana, mana, tree, dreamwalker. Hmm. Oh, there's Endry. So I do have them. Uh, dreamwalker. My uh, cleric, known. So this is the important one. Known, no or yes. I'm going to leave it blank just to show. Uh, class and name will fill in automatically if you've got the character selected. And this determines which level of spells. And here you determine the source. Where do you get this spell? And we'll click search. This will now show you 
every spell. Every spell in the game for a cleric with the way it's set up. Now, you'll notice none of these names are green. If I go to Dostava and I search, I've got green names. Green means you know it. White means you don't. So obviously on Dreamwalker, I've not bought any of her spells. If I go to known, yes, search, nothing. So what does this mean for you? Well, you've got your characters up to level 19, right? Or 20, whatever. Well, my characters are level 20. So I'm going to go to level here, and I'm going to go down to 20, and I'm going to go search. So what does this tell me? The name of the spell, the level of the spell, and these will be in level order, by the way, uh, for the, all the classes that can use it. Um, in particular, since I'm looking at Cleric, I just care that it's Cleric 1. So it, it will sort it by your, by your class, by the way. At the source, vendor means it's on some vendor somewhere in the world, and vendor POK means a POK vendor has it. And you might have to search a bit for it, but it's there. But if you click the spell, ah, this will tell you every vendor that has it, including the Mines of Glooming Deep, including who has it in Plane of Knowledge. In this case, we have two. Both the Paladin and the Cleric vendors have it. And there you go. Let's look for one that is not sold in POK, because one of the big things is sometimes uh, the POK does not have all the spells. So here's one. Cure Blindness, Cleric Shaman, Vendor, not POK. We hit Cure Blindness. We can now see where you can buy Cure Blindness, Glooming Deep. It's kind of why I recommended before you reach level 15 or 12 or whenever it doesn't let you back into Glooming Deep, if you could go in and buy the spells that are sold in Glooming Deep uh, because it has a pretty good selection. After level 20 or so, Abysmal Sea will become your primary purchase point. What I do is after level 20, or maybe it's 30, I think it's mostly 20. Uh, anyway, uh, in that range, I start sorting for only spells that are sold in Abysmal Sea. I go to Abysmal Sea, I buy all of them, and I will have a touring Abysmal Sea video eventually, but there's a lot to it that I don't know because I've only used it for spell vendors. But there you go. That's how you search your spells. Just click no, no, your level range you're looking for, and click search. And some of these are LDON only. These require LDON points. You're probably not going to get those until you're done leveling your character and uh, just to fill in your spell books. They're never particularly vital. So I would say the Ward of V-Line is pretty good for clerics, but that's another topic entirely. That is spells. Get comfortable using this to find your spells. It will save you a ton of time. And remember, if it says POK, but you don't know which vendor it is, click the name, scroll down until you find Plane of Knowledge. It will tell you where, which vendor it is and where they are. Remember, you can always target them and slash face to get a general direction. You can't remember where that particular vendor is. Skill caps. This is showing you the skill caps at whatever level you are for your class. You can scroll down and you can look at them. But if you're ever curious what your skill cap is, whether or not you've reached it, come here. It will show you the skill caps, which is pretty handy. Good to know. Uh, like, let's say, where's defense? Here we can see warriors are at, is that, oh, that's bard? Huh. Bard's at 252. Monk's at 252. Paladin is. Rogue is. Shadow Knight is. Warrior is. So uh, poor rangers don't get the 252. Poor guys. Uh, but yeah. Some things to know. Dodge. You know, what's the difference in the dodge between a monk at 280 here? Good avoidance there. Rogues are 260. Warriors are 240, so a little bit better than your rangers and paladins. So there you go. Skill caps. These are useful to know uh, because sometimes the, cl the client you're using will display a higher skill cap than the actual server allows. You can also type pound my skills to show your uh, actual appropriate skill caps, skill knowledge on your characters. So a useful page if you're curious what your caps are. Finally, Flags and zone access, I'll show this off. This shows you what keys you have uh, for what zones and what planar flags you've got or uh, gates of discord flags, those sorts of things. Oh, right. 
The front page is not always correct, by the way. I don't actually have this flag. There is an alt, alt access for this. I don't have it. Anyway, uh, when you get to the end game, uh, this is a way to keep track of which flags you have. So you know which flags you need and which flags you need to go to uh, to access the next zone. Pretty cool. Uh, so let's go back to the database editor. This is a very powerful tool. You're going to log in as guest. This is the actual server database. I need to stress that. This is the server database. Information you find here is correct. Period. Okay. The big things we care about here are basically NPC, loot, and spawns. Some of these you can use, other ones you can't. I think some of them, yeah, ghost guests don't have access to this functionality. We'll go back. But anyway, NPC. Select a zone. You could select any zone, even some that aren't implemented on the server yet, that you want to look at. Uh, what's a good one? Let's go with, well, let's do TOV. Temple of Ishan. You need to know their short names, by the way, but they're usually not that hard to figure out. Temple of Ishan. So this is Temple of Ishan. You click here. Now you can see every single mob in the zone. Cool. Let's click Aranar because he's right up near the top. <laughs> All of his stats. Now there's some things this doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you whether or not they're slowable. Uh, it doesn't tell you a couple of things about how their uh, uh, special attacks are, what their AoEs are. It doesn't tell you what spells they cast. However, it tells you their AC. It tells you how fast they move. It tells you how many hit points they have. It tells you their attack rating. It tells you if they can see Invis or Stealth of Sh or Shroud of uh, Shroud of Stealth, Shroud of Shadows, whatever. It shows you their stats, which are whatever. No one's ever cared about these. It shows you their resists. Super important to know. On this server, two hundred is only an eighty percent resist chance. I'm curious why that is. I've never asked the GM, but this seems to be about the default, which is sad because in this era, in this era, I believe two hundred was actually a uh, hundred percent resist chance. Uh, unfortunately, I think because of the Omens of War code that's in there, that got changed. So keep that in mind. Uh, it shows you their minimum damage hit and their maximum damage hit. Aranar's kind of a weakling. He only hits for 825. Shows you how fast they regen MP, how fast they regen HP. I don't know what the... I think that's their aggro range, what their attack speed is compared to a baseline. If they mitigate slow, you won't see this until God or Upper End Pop. What spells they use. Uh, so this guy uses uh, set 146. I don't know what that means. Actually, I think maybe you go into spells, but I, that might be easier. We'll check that in a minute. Uh, appearance. This is just their appearance. Uh, this is their miscellaneous. So he is trackable. He has no track blocking. Some mobs are untrackable. Get in mind. Spawn limit, unique spawn, all this kind of stuff. Not too busy. No, not too, not too uh, worrisome. You don't even know about this. He's a paladin, by the way. So maybe that's what uh, NPC spells 146 is. Uh, Paladin spell list. I didn't know that. Anyway, vendor, adventure, trap, tint, all that stuff. What faction he's on, all that. But that's not the really fun part. Let's click loot. Ah, you can see the loot tables. Uh, this is his entire loot table. Drop chance, overall chance. These are not really lifelike at all, much as I hate to say it. Um, they tend to just be balanced for whatever. This is the chance he'll drop a piece of loot. This is the time he'll drop it. He has a 100% chance to drop loot three times. He will always drop three pieces of loot on this table. Duplicates are allowed. I'll show you in a minute uh, a different kind of loot table here. Uh, let's go to spawns. So this will tell you Aaron Yar, who is mob ID bleh, has a chance to spawn of 100%. Cool. He will always spawn. How often does he spawn? Click view spawn points for this spawn group. Ah. Here is his location. Here is his pathing, or his heading, his face. So he faces 120. I don't know what direction that is off the top of my head. I want to say it. he faces south. He has no pathing grid. 
uh, and he has a respawn timer. This is in seconds. So copy that, pop down here, go ahead and click calculator, paste that. We're going to divide by 60. Yeah, let's divide by 60 again. 26 hours, little, little bit over 26 hour respawn timer. There's variance, which is currently not enabled on the server. Uh, as far as I know, uh, I certainly haven't seen it. What is spells? What does it show? Uh, I don't think we can click these. So we can't look up what the spell IDs actually mean. Whatever. Click that. Uh, what else do we have here? Merchants. Uh, select a zone. Select a merchant. You can find merchants here. Spells has nothing. Factions. Select a faction. This is meaningless, but here is your list. This is your range. I believe these cap at 2,000 as per normal, but here is the value you need to get. So if you're trying to figure out how many kills you need, sort of thing. Trade skill. Select a trade skill. Select a recipe. There you go. It will show you every recipe. So uh, if you ever want to find a guaranteed listing of the recipes that work on the server, here they are. Cool. Cool. Uh, I don't like the interface, so I still use EQ creators. But if there's ever a discrepancy, go. We can't edit this, so zones is useless. MISC is useless. I don't think it tells you. Yeah, there's no forage data. Uh, let's go to GFA. Uh, forage. So here you go. If you were ever curious, uh, cinnamon sticks, morning dew, ripened heart fruit all have the same chance. So you have a one third chance to find it. Cool. Uh, you do fishing for this. Doors. This will show you the door locations. Um, it's actually kind of useful if you're doing certain uh, click it mods for uh, areas. Uh, unfortunately, our version of E3 doesn't have the update for that that I've seen in other places. Uh, tasks, select a task. These are the different tasks that are actually in the game. Uh, you can just select them. It will tell you basically what is involved in all the different tasks. Moderately useful. Item editor we can't touch, and players we can't touch. So there you go. That is the player tools on EQ Titan. Track, by the way, isn't used anymore. I'm not going to get into it. But the big one to remember is you're really going to want to know inventory search really well. You're going to want to know player search or player spells very well. And the other one I say that's very useful is the database editor. You could look up spawn times, spawn locations, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, remember, if a mob is a triggered spawn, uh, that will never work. It'll say, this bot doesn't spawn. Maybe he's a result of a quest or a turn-in or some other spawn condition. So keep that in mind. But there you go. Uh, with that out of the way, I think we're going to talk about uh, purchasing your first spells uh, in POK. And I might roll that in with starting to actually look at uh, character INI files. Uh, though I might actually roll it in with the training. I'm not sure. But either way, until our paths cross again, have fun and stay safe, everyone.